Hi, I'm Michael Budd. I'm the producer and director for Ruby's Choice. Well, I was inspired to create this film because my grandmother had suffered from dementia and uh, my family dealt with all the usual things that you do in those situations. We were dealing with denial at first and then we were kind of cut, covering up between our family. Uh, we told lies to one another. We didn't know how to go about um, dealing with her issues. We didn't know directly how to speak to my grandmother. Uh, we went through all those difficult decisions and uh, we, you know, at certain points we failed to take ownership in the situation. So when I read this script, I was in inspired by how much it spoke to me um, and how much it was similar to my situation. And I, I truly believe that I was able to, I was best positioned to tell that story, uh, having lived through it myself with my grandmother. Well, the challenges we faced in the making of this film were enormous. The the film almost didn't go ahead uh, thanks to COVID. Um, it was almost abandoned. I knew that this couldn't happen because Ruby was such an important story and it may not see the screens, but more important than that, there was people's jobs on the line. The future of filmmaking in Australia was changing. The landscape was changing. So I ended up becoming more of a politician than a filmmaker. I ended up dealing with New South Wales Health, the federal government, trying to find up with all uh, work out all these different logistical challenges um, that were put in front of us. But at the end of the day, uh, Australian Q, uh, crews are very resilient. They want to wanted to work. They wanted to get back to work. So we found a way uh, by you know using hand sanitizer, one way on the set, one way off the set, face masks, keeping a safe distance, doing everything we could to ensure the safety of the crew and the cast. And we were able to meet those requirements and we filmed right in the middle of the heightened uh, global pandemic in uh, 2020. Well, people were frustrated at that point because if you remember around that time when COVID hit, there was a number of months where no one was able to work. It was a complete sort of shutdown. And, you know, these are not employees. These are, you know, essentially technicians and crew members and they work um, under, um, you know, the contracts. They don't have full-time work so their livelihood was on the line and people wanted to work they wanted to get back to work and I was happy that I was able to be a part of that and, and give jobs to New South Wales in that in that crucial time 200 jobs were created uh, through Ruby's Choice um, in particular you know around the Windsor area um, so uh, it was just it was important you know we uh, our landscape filmmaking landscape has changed so much over the years it's been so difficult to get Australian stories on the screen. We couldn't afford a setback like this. The other guys are kind of like, oh yeah, I'm making a film about dementia, but like, you know, this particular film, I mean, this is, this was, this was actually made to, to make a difference. I mean, you know, I've, I've made a lot of, like I've made four feature films in nine years. I made, you know, Love of My Life horror film. You know, I, it was in every JB Hi-Fi. I made Life of the Party, which is, you know, a fun film. I was in it myself. I've got Enter Sanctum coming out next year, sci-fi. But this particular film that I've made is actually the people that were involved in it were touched by dementia. So the, the whole ethos and the vibe, you know, what people were like to work with, on the set which was amazing. I mean, people just wanted this to be a success. Like they put their heart and soul into it because they had been touched by dementia and they understood they had grandparents that they were going to see which were getting them. They had mums that were like starting to get a little bit rocky and they were stressing out about, oh, you know, how am I going to deal with mum, you know? Like, and personally, my grandmother, when she had dementia, she was the matriarch of our family. She used to come over for family barbecues all the time. And, you know, within two, three seconds, she would just like flip out and leave. You know, someone would upset her in a way and she'd just spark off and leave. And everyone was like, where's grandma? And grandma would be gone. But you mark our words. Next barbecue, she was the first person invited. She was the matriarch, the lifeblood of our family. And people with dementia still have so much to offer. And it's about navigating that and how we deal with people with dementia. And I think Ruby touches on quite a few of those interesting subject points. Well, uh, what I'm hoping that audiences take away from Ruby's choice is that they're challenged to see a film that tackles this really touching subject matter of dementia. I'm determined as a director 
in this film to help families identify early signs of onset dementia. I want them to experience uncharted territory. I want them to feel something. And I think when Ruby's choice is shared with the broader community, it will start to shift the perception of what's possible for people with dementia. Before, I don't want to go into probably the next question, but I'm determined to help families sort of work out of what they can do. I mean, dementia, Alzheimer's is the number one killer of Australian women right now. So it's a really prevalent subject matter and important and something that I hold close to my heart. One piece of advice I would give to inspiring creators is start with an open heart and an open mind, but most of all start, you know, I be truly believe that um, creating is all about collaborating. So find like-minded individuals, tell them what you want to do and, and what your ideas are and get them involved. And there is no wrong or right way to make a film. Always trust in that. Something else I would like to mention is that this particular film will always be very special to me due to its philanthropic nature. 50% of the profits are going to the Dementia Foundation Spark for Life philosophy, which was all about reinvigorating the spark for life in people with dementia. A portion of the film's budget was donated to Lifeline before we even started filming. So we understand that, that how touching the subject matter can be. And we hope that when people see this film, that they'll be able to know what to do and how to talk to people with dementia and what they can do for their families and how they can move forward and still keep people with dementia as an active part in their life. And, I, you know, furthermore, on top of that, I just want to add, like some of the other films that have been made in the topic of dementia, they've mainly been comedies because it is slightly easier to tackle this heavy subject matter. But Ruby's Choice is a drama, but it's lifting and it leaves you full of spirit, full of hope and full of enthusiasm about what the future will bring. And it's also revolving around three generations of inspiring women. And it, um, what it is, it's a woman's perspective. You know, these other films, uh, you know, Supernova, The Father, they were the male perspective. And then the other films that may have been around dementia are comedies. Uh, because it is challenging to, to, to challenge the audiences in this way. But I truly believe with what we've done with Ruby's Choice is we've found a way to have that dramatic effect, but still leave the audience feeling uplifted and, and, and totally positive.